If you're a fairly long time pod listener, you will remember that your first introduction to Jalen Withers mm. came from Fiona Crawley. Man, even I don't remember this, Adam. Fiona Crawley, Carolina Women's Tennis National Champion, told us this past summer that she was like, somebody from the basketball team came around and introduced themselves. <laughs> and he was just going around and meeting everybody in the apartment complex. She was like, it was so nice because he just wanted to say hello to everybody because he didn't know anybody. Yeah. We were like, well, who was it? She goes, Jalen? Said Jalen Washington? It doesn't sound like something Jalen Washington would do. <laughs> And she goes, I don't think so. We said, Jalen Withers. She was like, yes, it was Jalen Withers. Spot on. So Jalen Withers had a very good reputation on the pod even before he yeah. ever made a basket for the Tar Heels. <laughs> Jalen, why did you not come by here and introduce yourselves to yeah, us? Yeah, you could have come to the Pod Row headquarters right else? here, Jalen, hung out with us. Ah, I feel like y'all put me in a tough situation right here. <laughs> 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 um, I would say uh, when I was moving to the apartment, um, I was trying to, you know, get – a little acclimated, uh, a little bit faster than usual because I honestly had no idea where I was walking to and how to get to my room. Um, I actually went to the wrong building when I first got here. Um, but uh, as far as stopping up here, I mean, I didn't know this was a thing. Hey, until, you're until, here until, now. Until media day. That's until all media that you're day. here now. That's all that matters. Yes, sir. That's facts. Um, all right. A lot to talk about. I think that's a good place to start. Acclimation. It, in this new world of college athletics there's a lot of moving around how, how has it been for you going from one place where you were from several years and i know you're from north carolina originally but to here and just the whole new experience how how have you acclimated yourself um i would say i'm uh starting to get 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 back in a little groove uh being back in north carolina i think that um last time i was here uh, i had a pretty good uh rep going for my name and um i think that i'm trying to you know come back and build on top of that uh, i think that um outside of the weather you know north carolina weather is so wishy-washy i don't really know, know how else to describe it one day it'll be freezing probably 20 degrees and the next day it'll be 60 with like light showers it's just so <laughs> weird and we rarely get snow here but um i think that um it's, it's, it's been pretty good since i've been back been it's slowly getting acclimated again how about on the court? It just feels like from watching you play, I don't know. I'm going to pick a game, like maybe like the state game or something. Somewhere in that range of time, you started going, ooh, Jalen Withers. And then it's just kind of kept coming and kept coming and coming. It feels like you're more comfortable out there. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, that's definitely a fair statement. Um, I think that um, in practice, I've been getting a lot more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, a lot more um, – hands-on reps, you know, with, uh, you know, certain drives, you know, making certain reads, the backdoor cuts that I've been, you know, making a living off of so far. Um, you know, just getting a connection with everybody. I think that um, that's kind of just been been what I've been living by since, I, since I've been uh, getting more and more comfortable, and I think that uh, that's kind of shown itself. Did you see something on film or have a conversation with somebody that, that made you realize that those things were available? Mm, yeah, I would say so. I would say um, a lot of the coaches have really uh, told me since I've gotten here that I'm a great off-ball cutter. Like, I tend to cut at the, the right time whenever my man isn't looking at me or whenever he looks to go help on the drive. And, um, you know, I kind of bought into that. And uh, Big May, um, Sean May, showed me a lot of uh, film and clips on it. And, um, you know, I just kind of honed in on it. How about – the rebounding has come a long way also. You had seven, I think, in 17 minutes on, on Monday night. What have you been trying to do more of on the rebounding side? Go get them. Uh, <laughs> I think that, um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm super athletic. And uh, don't get me wrong, boxing out is, is definitely something that needs to be done in certain games. But I think that in other games, it's just first one to go get the ball. And I think that I can out jump almost everybody on the court. So just been really utilizing my athleticism out there. All right, I know this is going to be hard to believe. You probably can do things athletically that neither Adam nor I can do. I know that's surprising <laughs> for you. So, like, when did you realize that you were jumping higher than most guys? And, like, what is it like? When, like what game was it where you kind of jumped up there and hung there for a second because the ball took a funky bounce and then you gave it the tip that dunk? Pit. pit, yes. Yeah. So, I'm like... Like, what's it like to do something? I, I will never know. So I just, I need to know what it's like. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to describe. It's like, uh, 
well, talking about that specific example, uh, the dunk against Pitt, um, it was like the ball went up. Usually, like, the ball comes off a little faster. It goes a little long, but I like it. The way that I watched it, like, just leave, I think it was Cormac who shot it or maybe RJ. Oh, no, actually, it was Mondo, I think. He shot a, a touch finish, I believe. And the way that it came off, off his hands, I was like, yeah, this might be a little short. He left a little short. His legs a little tired or something. Um, and, you know, like, it just came off perfectly. Well, not really perfectly. I had to wait up there for a little bit, but <laughs> I was in the right. I was in the right spot. It landed in my area, so that, that, that's all I can really ask for. I think I can make some shake with that. Has there ever been anything smoother in Carolina basketball history than when you hung on the rim and thanked the passer at the same time? Yeah, that was pretty good. I've <laughs> yeah, never seen that before. I've never sure seen that ever. <laughs> I was, I was, me and Ari, like we we were starting to get a little connection on the, on the breaks. Uh, either he's throwing me a, a pass early to take off or to finish, or he's looking for the lob. And um, you know, we we work on it in practice a lot too. We get a lot of reps doing that and. You know, I had to thank him. I mean, we always talk about thanking the passer, and you know, I had to make sure I shot it out, my guy. Most of us do it with our feet on the ground. <laughs> Jalen Withers does it while surveying the yeah. landscape from above. Talk about those lobs. It just feels like this team throws more lobs than any team here recently, which, as you said, I think requires that connection. Mm -hmm. How do you build that connection so that plays like that that just happen on instinct can occur? I think it's just uh, having a feel for one another. I think that um, we know what um, I would say our strong suits are or what each other's strong suits are. Like, you know, me and Seth are like really athletic. Uh, Harrison is capable of catching some Mondo, Jay Wash. But um, me and Seth in specifics, like we're like uber athletic. So I think that, uh, you know, with Elliot being the, the great passer that he is and you know, RJ making, making plays off the, I mean, with the ball. Um, I think that that's just something that we really Lock in on, focus on. All right, of course, you guys played Louisville a couple games ago. What was that like for you? You had been there for several years. You knew guys on the team. What What was that experience like? <laughs> uh, <laughs> gave me a lot of anxiety uh, going into the day. Sure. Uh, I woke up um, a little anxious. I was, I was uh, talking to my um, <laughs> couple of close friends and uh, was telling them, like, I'm – like excited to play him, but at the same time, like, ooh, I gotta have a good one. I know it's, it's, it's gonna be a big one for me. Uh, I'm gonna, I mean, I was just honestly manifesting it uh, going into the day, kind of put a little bit of pressure on myself. Uh, I think when I first came in, it wasn't really the best minutes or best spur of minutes that I had, but I think that as my nerves started to come down and, you know, I started joking around uh, with Marcus on the bench or, um, you know, started talking to a couple of the Louisville players, I think that my nerves ended up easing up and I was just out there having fun at that point. I don't ask you this question to, like, say something negative about Louisville or for you to talk about how bad it was or anything like that, but it was obviously a very difficult year a season ago. Yeah, for sure. Just as a competitor – what was that like? How, how did you try and manage your way through that? Because that I I can imagine that was difficult. Um, I would say as in as a competitor, uh, it was definitely difficult because it was. Um, I would say like we in a sense like weren't really the most connected in a sense like from uh, head to toe. I felt like we had a lot of guys that were bought in, and we had a handful of guys that weren't, and. Um, I would say that kind of showed on the court. It would be like once we started making subs or making like different rotations, it was like it was a fall off more than like it already was with, mm -hmm. I guess, the level of play that we uh, ended up, you know, having. Did it make you appreciate anything or see anything differently when, when you went through a tough year like that? Um, Yeah, for sure. I think that um, it showed me that, um, you know, I mean <laughs> – all you really got to do is just weather the storm at the end of the day and got to take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that, like, we we had a, a tough stretch at the beginning of the season, and it was like we didn't really think that we were going to be good at all. And once we ended up getting a win, it was like, okay, we can actually compete with some of these guys. Like, everybody's not just, you know, way more talented than us and way more hungry than us. Like, we, we actually can compete with certain people. And I think that – uh, coming into Carolina, like I've kind of carried over that mindset. I think that it's been, uh, I want to say, what was it, the Villanova game? Like it was a tough loss. Like nobody wants to lose to a big-time team like that, especially early in the season. I feel like that was a statement game for us for sure. 
But at the same time, like, you got to be grateful for it because at the end of the day, like, every game is a learning lesson mm -hmm. or, or, or a, a chance to learn and get better. And I think that if we didn't have those type of games early in the season, we wouldn't be at the point that we are at now. Everybody has talked about how connected this team is. Having been through it when maybe not everybody is that close, has that impacted the way that, that you try to be part of that and kind of facilitate that, understanding how important it is? Mm. Rephrase the question. My bad. Because you've been through a team that wasn't quite as connected, mm -hmm. on this team that everybody says is so connected, have you maybe made any sort of extra effort to make sure that that connection is there and make sure you have a part in that since you've seen what happens when that's not present? Um, yeah, for sure. I think that um, not only off the court, like connection should be something that's vital, but as well as on the court. And I think that, you know, one through 14, like we're all talking to each other on and off the court, on the court, like we're like, if one person doesn't have energy, like we get him riled up or get him like amped up, like Ari or I say Ari, uh, RJ or either um, Harrison or Cormac or honestly anybody would just, you know, go talk to him, get him to lock in, you know, give more energy. And like we would all just feed off of it. And I think that, that applies off the court as well. I think that, um, you know, we all this might be the funniest team that I've, that I've ever been on out of out of all the teams I've been on in college. What makes him so funny? And who's the funniest? Like who who can you count on to be ridiculous when you need a laugh? That's tough. Um, uh, you put me on the spot on this one. Uh, who's the funniest? I would say the most spontaneous, like with with jokes or with the the, the funniness, is probably Harrison. Yeah, like that. Like he, he's a character for sure. That, that's <laughs> that's that's for sure. He. Um, He's my roommate for one, and so I honestly hear it day in and day out, even when I'm not trying to. But uh, yeah, he's he's probably one of the funniest people I know. Have you ever met anybody that talks faster than him? He says a lot of words. Well, we in got a like, very small amount. Like Jaywood, who's like real yeah. kind of slow and smooth, and then you got Harrison, yeah. who's like I mean, bursting <laughs> words. <laughs> <laughs> you guys together are like normal speed. Yeah, that's for sure. Man, he's. We, I think we make a good, make a good, make a good duo for sure. Uh, I think that we we feed off each other. He's like really spontaneous. I'm more laid back, and I think that the areas where like we need to chill, I kind he kind of feeds off of me. In the areas where you know I need to be a little bit more energetic or spontaneous, I, I feel like that's the best word to really use for him. I can uh, feed off him. How do you get Harrison Ingram to chill? <laughs> uh, that's a tough one. I don't know. He, <laughs> he got he got he got long reserves. <laughs> That's for sure. All right. If whenever basketball's done, have you thought about doing like a late night DJ uh, for? <laughs> <laughs> you got a good voice. You got like smooth uh, man, voice. Man, um, definitely might do some voiceovers. You know, I might be on my uh, Morgan Freeman stuff. But, I like uh, it. <laughs> That's a good idea. I think uh, Cormac might have me beat on that. I think Cormac does. Cormac and Jay Wash do great impersonations, so I think they would probably do best on that, though. Who, well, we know Jay Wash does a really good Coach Davis impersonation. Uh, spot on, for sure. <laughs> what about Cormac? What does he do? Uh, he does a little bit of everything. He, he gives uh, movie quotes. He gives uh, TikToks, you know, Vines, you know, before... <laughs> Yes, yeah, like, you know, before that, that sounds was like thing. Cormac. TikTok seems like it might be a little too new for Cormac. <laughs> hey, I can't let y'all do Mac like that. Mac, Max hip, Max hip, Max hip. He's hip to, to everything that's going on in the Gen Z era, but uh, he, 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 he's aware. He's, he's locked in. You seem like you think about stuff. Like you're, you're not just going out there and playing and then you never think about it the rest of the day. Like I feel like you think about your game. Has that ever presented a problem for you? And how did you figure out not to overthink it? Um, I would say that that for sure was a problem for me. I tend to uh, overthink things a lot. Like if I feel like I'm so versatile to the point where I feel like I can do anything on the court at any time, whether that be on offense or defense. And it's like, I think the thing that I've figured out, which I've been able to do uh, as of late is, you know, just be simple, like let the game come to me rather than 
trying to go out and, and make a play almost every possession. I think that like with the weapons that we have and, you know, how deep our roster is, I think that I don't really have to do that in a sense. What is working so well defensively? The last eight, nine, ten games in that range, the, the numbers have been incredibly impressive. And just watching it, you can tell the defense is better. What what do you think is working on that side of things? Uh, I would say it would be ego and pride. Nobody wants to get scored on. Nobody wants to get chewed out in film. Nobody wants to get, you know, chewed out in the, the media timeouts or the 30 or full timeouts. You know, it's it's really just we want to win at the end of the day. And I think that uh, not only our guards, but like our bigs went through, like I said, 14, just all on the same page. Nobody really wants to be the guy that let everybody else down. We want to all succeed at the same time. It does, and I know this is going to sound like a really simple statement. It does feel like this team wants to win. Mm -hmm. Like that that's the only thing that, that matters. Is that, do you Biggest think that's right? I definitely agree with that. Um, I think that regardless of, of play, Regardless of stats, regardless of if you get in, if you don't, like everybody's happy with winning. <laughs> Nobody wants to be on a losing team. It's different if we were losing, but sure, we're doing pretty good. So I think that um, with that being the case, like, what can you really be upset about? Carolina's going to Tallahassee tomorrow. Uh, as as you're hearing this, you've been into a lot of these same arenas with another team. Mm -hmm. What have you noticed, if anything, is different about going into these places with Carolina? Um, I would say it seems like a rivalry game almost every game. Uh, I would say the vibes would be similar to, I guess, like when I was at Louisville playing Kentucky, and it's just like that almost every game. Like everybody's trying to play their best. Everybody's looking to make a highlight play. Everybody's looking to, you know, whoop on us. And, I mean, being Carolina, like we just can't go for that. What kind of person does it take to be able to play that way every single night like you know you can do that once a season if you only have to get up for it once a year but if you've got to do that 10 15 times a year what kind of person do you need to be able to do that uh definitely a mentally tough person I mean it's going to be days where like you're really hurt you're really banged up you really probably don't want to do it but at the end of the day like you got people that are counting on you not only from the coaching staff but players as well as like fans like nobody really wants to like I said be the guy that let everybody down so I think that um, that's probably the biggest piece right there. All right, what w away from basketball? Talk what's Jalen Withers all about? Uh, I would say I'm a big gamer. <laughs> I, 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 I binge watch shows and watch games. I mean, play games with, with my free time. I tend to, you know, really take advantage of the, the, the downtime that I do get. You know, because I'm typically, you know, with school going on, I'm right ripping and running, ripping and running from. Lauder Milk uh, doing going to like study hall meet with, meet with my academic advisor to you know going to class to early morning lifts to practice and then you know we got prep film like all of that stuff I got to make sure I'm catching up on my meals I feel like I'm just constantly ripping and running but sure. definitely got to take advantage of that downtime that I do get. I don't think people understand that. So, spoiler, today is Wednesday as we're recording this. Can you kind of walk people through your day today? Um, uh, <laughs> A little tough for me to go back to sleep uh, last night, so I probably didn't go to sleep until like 12. Woke up at 7, came to the gym, 8, uh, had weights at 7.45, had practice at 10 because everybody uh, has later classes rather than in the morning, like first semester. Um, after that, I had downtime to get more shots up after practice, uh, get treatment in the cold tub, uh, get a massage. Um, then I had to go get prep for my class at 3.30. Went to class, and here I am. And, and you're going back to get shots up after this. Yep. So we're the best part of the day, I think, is what I just heard <laughs> Jay much, Witt say. Is what much, I think that's much. what I heard him say. Man, hands down. <laughs> I'll give it to y'all. <laughs> All right, so uh, obviously things have gone well, and particularly gone well in the last month or so. What in your mind is important for this uh, level of quality play to continue? Um, I would think it would be something that HD uh, mentioned. Want to say in practice this morning, he he just doesn't want us to really get satisfied. Like we got to remain in the trenches, remain hungry, and I think that that's probably the biggest thing that separates you know good teams from great teams. 
think that like day in and day out, you gotta be willing to make the sacrifice to work as hard as you can with just for that time period that you do have to work, I guess, in a sense. I think that that's uh, something that we've really been focusing on.